You've seen what the Abraham team, led by Gene Kogan's done. We've got the Studio Morphogen team. Uh, so the Art Breeder guys, they've done some amazing work that we'll kind of showcase soon. There are dozens and dozens of teams already kind of working on amazing things. Um, we can't wait to release the feature set. So the website, when it starts, will be relatively limited as we kind of see what load is like. And then we'll increase that over time and add in some of these features that, again, you've seen in Disco and Majesty and others. From multi-stage prompt processing to, well, you know, uh, let's say more motion-based stuff to, you know, some of the things that have come about as a result of discussions here. Like everyone's used the seed stuff. What if you could do proper explorations in prompt space and make adjustments along various vectors of happiness or sadness or coolness, etc.? Um, I wish I could become more cool. But, you know, like we could move prompts and things like that in that direction as three-dimensional maps. That's an example. If we don't build it, someone else will, which is a fantastic thing. So that this package will become better and better and better, and then hopefully people will be able to remix and adjust stuff, because who knows what this model will be used by. So I think kind of that's the plan. In the next few days, hopefully roll that out and really accelerate it, just like we've done with everything. Um, I think against that, you know, thank you all for stress testing the model on the bot. I think it's given us really amazing uh, data, and thank you to Chia in particular on the team and others for spending loads of time building out the bot and the mods for kind of moderating. Um, you saw uh, we tried to introduce a not safe for work filter yesterday. It's not really a not safe for work filter, it's a see what you want to see filter. And, you know, we're going to bring that back in and really stress test it and see how it is. Now, some of you might not get the prompts that you want and the outputs you want. That's, you know, the nature of the beast. We really want to stress test it and see how it goes. And we're going to simplify the bot a bit to be a bit more of a DALI type experience with um, probably, I think, two by two outputs by default and 50 steps as well. I've been on the record before saying that, you know, maybe at a high CFG scale, you get more out of 70 steps versus, you know, 50. You will be able to have that feature again in future um, via various kind of systems, including our own. But for now, the next stage of the bot is putting it out, making it a bit more straightforward, and then adding some of the quality improvement features and optimization features to see how can we scale this up from serving 15,000 people to 15 million people and more. Um, so expect a slightly simpler thing in terms of the two by two format, some caps and steps, but not really much else apart from the not safe for work filter. And again, that one will start quite heavy and then we'll dial back and try to find the fine tune settings as soon as possible because those fine tune settings are what's gonna be released in the package. As you run the package, or as you run it on our service or others, you'll be able to adjust what those parameters are however you want. So if you're me, for example, you don't like clowns. A fear of clowns is called cholerophobia. So I don't want any clowns in any of my prompts, outputs, whatsoever. So you can adjust the filter to make sure you don't see clowns. Is that type of thing is that type of thing that we're talking about. And again, this is why your help and input will be super invaluable for that. Um, I think the bot itself will decide what to do with it over the next kind of few days as the website takes off because the website, you know, will just offer a much better experience. Like again, congratulations and kudos to Midjourney for somehow scaling the Discord bot. Just craziness, right? Um, even with kind of us at 15,000 producing as many images as 100,000 on any other server. Um, but I don't think it's sustainable. I think, I hope this community will evolve from a kind of Discord bot community to more of a, you know, how do you use stable diffusion in the best way from development to community to encouraging people to learn about the various elements and get out there in the world. But we'll see how it goes. The mod team are very excited and they've got lots of plans. You know, Bill, I know that you've been working on a bunch of things as well. Um, but I think this week will mark the next evolution of this. So what is it? Nine days after launch. <laughs> you know, it's it's been a busy old time. Right. Bill, with that, is there anything else you want to say before we go into AMA? Yeah, I, I want to just echo and build on the last thing you said about the transition of this community and this Discord, because it is an incredible place with incredible people. And the community is going to continue to grow. And and those of you who, who are here, you know, you're you're the experts now, you know, like there's going to be a million people who are going to want to learn how to use stable diffusion. And, uh, you know, you're the experts. And that's that's a fantastic thing because, you know, you're going to be able to teach other folks and learn and share and really um, kind of, you know, lead and 
you know, create work that's really, you know, hopefully really impactful and really positive. So with that, I'll jump to uh, some of the first questions we got in the text chat for the AMA. Um, very first one is from Urkarp, E-R-C-R-A-C-R-P. Uh, okay, so the question is, how would the process of training a text-to-video model differ from a text-to-image model in terms of the training data that's used? All right, so that's an excellent question. I think that um, what these models are, they are transformer-based attention models. So what they do is when you look at a sentence, it knows which parts almost are the most important and understands that. For video, video is like a bunch of images interpolated, and it's understanding both the individual images and the connections between those images. So a lot of video training data sets have been relatively small scrapes of YouTube and other things, um, even when doing the longer form videos like the Woods paper from Miller Quebec and others. We do have some working text to video outputs, such as COG video, which I believe is, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, nine billion parameter model, or maybe it's six, um, but they're very short clips. I think one of the things we're looking at is how do we take it from short to long? So the COG video to the Woods, and what are the prime data sets for that? The data sets that I advocate for are actually audio described data sets. So those of you who kind of have deaf people in your immediate circle will see that a lot of movies are audio described, which means that rather than subtitles, it actually describes the scenes. That's ideal for these. And we're doing deals with national broadcasters and others to bring these data sets onto kind of our data set servers so that we can really train some super interesting things around that because you'll be able to understand the links between the audio description and the video itself. Um, however, it does require a significant amount of compute. <laughs> Thankfully, we have it. We might need even more. And we still haven't finalized the total data sets for that either. So this will be a matter of another month or two, I think, before we really get training on the large-scale variants of that. But the nature of this training is that you typically start small and then you start ramping it up because you want to test the code and other stuff. And some of the code has already been started on for this. It'll be made a lot easier by the Imogen code and stable diffusion code that we have as well, because there are kind of crossovers to that. But, you know, like I said, my target is text to video towards the end of the year, turn of the year. Um, and again, for a lot of these things, audio and other things, it will be a case of maybe it'll start at VQ GAN level and then it'll get better, whereas other stuff will go kind of straight to full throttle afterburners. We'll kind of see how it goes there. All right, next question. Excellent. Okay, the next the next question in the Ask Me Anything, and it is called an Ask Me Anything, uh, is by Crotalis here, and the question has seven stars on it, and it says, "What is your comment slash reaction to the quote digital artist uproar end quote lately on uh, the Twitter?" So you know we did something interesting here in that. The data set that Stable Diffusion is trained on is the whole internet. It's two billion images. And we were like, do we filter it down, that 100 terabytes image? And we're like, no. Because we actually wanted it to represent the subconscious of humanity. Uh, and that's for a variety of reasons. First, it's the benchmark model to start. So this is the first of its kind. So we wanted it to be too representative. We didn't pick artists out and decide to kind of have them and put them in there. It's literally just a scrape of the entire internet. Minus the illegal bits, shall we say. That's the only thing. And once you start filtering, you keep filtering. Because one will always say, why don't you filter this or that, etc. I went on the Holly Herndon and Matt Dryhead's podcast and talked about the nature of art with these models kind of coming out. You have to redefine who are you as an artist and where does your kind of value lie? Because these generalized models that can do everything can also do the art element. I am very sympathetic to the fears and the other elements there because, you know, it's worrying when you can have that level of aesthetic output no matter what it is from this general model that can do everything again taking 100 terabytes and putting it to two gigabytes but we have to consider along these various things is it lawful well this is a model that was created by the university of heidelberg Comviz, and it's being hosted by them supported by us from compute and expertise as well but it is an academic research model first and foremost that's being released under a permissive license it is legal within Europe to do that. It is legal within the UK to even do that commercially. And it's legal within the US per the Supreme Court to do that as well. So it's legal. Is it moral? So on moral, you have a whole bunch of different moral things. I think we we're going to launch a philosophy channel. So kind of my other hat is kind of, uh, well, let's just say we do a lot of ethics and moral philosophy. 
Um, there are various kind of arguments to this. I think the net benefit for humanity is ridiculously large. Um, I think that we're about to have a Renaissance 2.0 moment where the entire creative potential of humanity and ability to communicate changes over the next six months as this diffuses. And that is insane. So I would argue, yes, it is very much moral on an individual and collective basis. And again, it is kind of what it is. It is not targeted at anyone. It is just the nature of that. Good is legal and it is moral. Is it ethical? Um, you know, I think, again, this is the first of its kind. There will be many other models. And in fact, we have already released the code and the data. If you want to right now, you can create your own model. It will take 250,000 a 100 hours if you want to replicate this, plus a lot of expertise in multipod. But there is nothing stopping you right now from downloading that code and creating your own model. You know, it's out there, which means that this will happen. It's just who is going to do it on the other side. Against that, again, we recognize the kind of needs and importance of this. So Holly and Matt have launched something for artists to say, you know, let us train their own models. And we've been thinking about this, like, maybe we should have an artist registration program because we are in a privileged space of being the coordinators of this new ridiculously crazy movement that's kind of there, whereby artists can upload their portfolios and almost have a digital fingerprint of their names and their portfolios that services such as Night Cafe and Mid Journey and others can use to exclude their styles from the output. Now, is that something that should be mandatory? I don't believe so, because again, I'm someone who's very much on personal, individual, and collective liberty. But is it something that could be useful and help assuage them? I believe so. Um, so, you know, this is a complicated issue. Um, obviously, you know, it's very passionate. I think most of the arguments are a bit specious. I think they belie a misunderstanding of the underlying technology, but at the same time, the fears are valid and should not be discounted, you know? And again, they are scared. And it's the nature to be scared when something this momentous and crazy is about to happen. But the number of artists that would be created and the new jobs and innovation from this will ridiculously far outweigh any disruption that occurs on the other side. And in fact, as I mentioned on my Twitter, much of the funding for this, for the external funders, comes from artists and others who found themselves able to express in a different and brand new way from ever before. So quite a long answer. It's quite a complicated topic. But again, like I said, I think there's some headlines there. And I'm happy to go into more detail about certain elements of that in future questions. Excellent. Okay. All right. Well, I think we're on to a softball question here. So uh, the next one is uh, from Matthew HK asks, will multiple GPUs be supported when running locally uh, at home computers? Um, you mean kind of with NVLink and things like that? I don't see why not, I, right? I, yeah, I would presume. Yeah, probably. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like, here's the thing. Will be supported means by what? By stability and our software? Maybe, maybe not. I think most certainly, like, it's very, very likely. But you don't need permission. You can build your own code for multi-GPU, you know, so you can run two things at the same time. Um, and you have multi-image processing and different types of batch sizes and things like that. So if we don't do it, someone else will. And that's cool. You know, and that's the nature of this. It is not a locked service. Excellent. All right. Uh, so the next one is from Sam and has a direct question here is just a, asking for a date of the when will the model be open sourced? And there's a second follow up question to that, which is, do you know what inference time is per image on a v100 the model will be open sourced after the not safe for work filter is tested you guys help us fine tune some of the settings and there is an ethical use license that we are considering whether or not to add um that will go with it and that is all that's between us and the release of this model so out of the box it does what you think it will do and that's it and you can adjust and tweak those settings however you want. Or well, again, it's open source. Do what you want, rule zero of open source. If we can get as close to that as possible, fantastic. Um, so hopefully not long. I should also add, I am not the one who makes the decision on the models being released. That is not our way at stability. It is the developers. Please do not hassle them. They want to do this right. They are very deep thinkers. They are geniuses, right? And so as soon as they are comfortable, we will release the model. If they are not comfortable, we will take longer. And again, do this properly. You know, it isn't like the TechCrunch headline. Um, you know, uh, the rest of the article is pretty good. I didn't like the headline, but it's okay. 
we do think about consequences and we do do these things thoroughly because it's important, you know? Um, so I'd like to kind of put that. Uh, second question was what again? Sorry, Bill. Second part uh, the question. second question was very specific about inference time per image on a V100, which I'm not sure. I think it'll probably be it. FP16. It'll be about four seconds. That would be my guess. Uh, yeah, I think and that's a guess. And there's lots of different things you can do. Like the bot you're seeing isn't super optimized. There are all sorts of stuff that you can do. It depends on steps, uh, samplers, things like that. But, you know, let's say four or five seconds on a V100. Because it'll be equivalent to these 3090 type equivalents that we're running on right now. Um, yeah, there's stuff you can do to probably get that down as it's optimized. But like I said, we've barely done any optimization. That will maybe be the next step of the bot. And again, this beta test that we do now. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that can be done around the generators. Mm -hmm. Okay, our, our next question in the chat here is from Neutron Flux Labs 28. And uh, this is a... Uh, they're asking for the odds here. What are the odds? What are the chances I can link latent diffusions weights into the stable diffusion model to play with uh, for right now prior to release, or will that not work at all? Um, no, it won't won't work. Um, they're like they're different architectures because you have the embedding. Like again, you could potentially train it yourself and do a clip L14 embedding, or wait until next week when we release clip. Bit H, but I mean, like, there's really not that much longer to wait, right? It's just like we're doing our best to get this out there in a responsible way. And like I said, hundreds and hundreds of researchers already have it. Um, we are kind of going through when we release, everyone will have it. So, yeah, I would say if you want to play with it, this is the best place to play with it right now. Uh, should we take a voice question or just continue on the chat? Absolutely. Question? Yeah, yeah, for sure. We can certainly. We've got some hands up here. So, um, Shiga Wire, I see your hand up. So, I am going to invite you up to speak. Hello. Welcome. Howdy. Thank you. Um, I have a question uh, regarding, well, <clears throat> the first question is a very easy one. It's either yes, maybe, or no. The second question is more like uh, difficult. But the first question is, will it be possible for the version 2 16 gigabyte model to be compressed to fit on a 12 gigabyte VRAM. And we haven't said what the size of the VT model is. <laughs> so uh, well, there's no, there's no comment. I've read on that it one. somewhere. Okay, yeah. no comment on that one. Okay. <clears throat> Second question is you mentioned something about clowns being blocked from your uh, censorship. Well, it's not really censorship, but like uh, it's a model to help you get more of the prompts that you want. Uh, does that mean we can be able to negatively prompt? Yes. Ooh. So, like, right now the filter is a bit brute force, right? But you can expect, again, all your favorite features from Disco Diffusion and Majesty Diffusion will find their way into the website. When? TBD. But they will find their way in, and that includes prompt weighting and other elements like that. The model is more than capable of it. Again, the filter is a bit different, and you know it's got different features, such as the ability to blur, blank, or just rerun the prompts, and it next knocks out the negation. So if it detects a clown that snuck in there because they're freaking creepy, it will <laughs> adjust the weights to be negative and rerun it, and then the clown disappears. So you know, I think that's a happy medium. You know, and again, the filters are customizable um, on the code awesome. base that we're putting up. Um, I'm just wondering if that code base, uh, if we can do it in the prompt section, or we'll have to edit the code to make negative prompts. So again, the filter should be considered as a generalized thing that you set and forget, right? Ah, Whereas okay. the filter is more dynamic, and you know, prompt weights are just the merest scratch of the surface compared to kind of what we've been thinking about and have planned, right, Bill? Yes, exactly, yep. Yeah, there's like an entire latent space to explore, and it's what's this combination of different factors and vectors within that. Um, so, you know, it's don't worry about it. You'll, you'll be able to really fine-tune and customize, not fine-tune, you'll be able to really customize the outputs you want and adjust them as we, and again, people in the community, build stuff on top of this Lovely little couple of gigabyte model. Although I think we might be releasing the four gigabyte version. 
and uh, then the two gigabyte. I'm not sure. Uh, I should probably awesome. check that out. Yeah. All right. Thanks. The pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for the question. Okay. So I am going to invite up uh, Mr. Herb. I think that's the name there. Mr. Herb, you're uh, coming up to the stage, please. Welcome, Mr. Herb. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have a question with regards to the way that the AI reads the prompts and it's kind of interwoven with the NSFW filter and something Ima talked about in an interview with the sumo wrestler example and how Dali kind of adds to the prompt in the background. So my question is, what exactly makes it so that all these different AIs take the same prompt in such a different way? And does the NSFW filter change the weights or does it like do something with the prompt similar to Dali? Or can you maybe elaborate on that? Um, so the NSF work filter basically has a clip model um, plus some extra tricks that just classifies the outputs. And then it says, what do we do with this output? Do we blur it, block it or rerun it? with this kind of weight negatively weighted. So it's not hugely complex, but you know, it is actually really useful because it can also be used to filter concepts and kind of other things like that. Um, it, again, we're trying to be as transparent as possible around these. So you know what happens to your prompt in between on the way in and way out. Whereas anything you do with black box systems such as the other ones. But you know, right. um, that, that's, I think the principle, Bill, is that kind of correct? I think we've tried various iterations and, you know, we'll be sharing a lot of our thinking around how to make these models more aligned with outputs that you are expecting, shall we say. Right, right. Exactly. And the, uh, the, the way that it reads the prompts, I, I saw something about that uh, stable diffusion has like 30,000 words or something that it knows. Is it, does that have to do with that, that different AIs read the prompt in a different way or is it something else? No, oh, and it knows way more than 30,000 words. Like, I'm not sure what the dictionary is, but you know, massively more. So what this has is kind of, a, again, it's trained on 2 billion images and then subsets of those 2 billion images. Um, and this has what's known as CLIP. So the classical models had a generator and then a guider. So you generate it with a diffusion model and you guide it with a CLIP model. This kind of combines them both together. So this was a technique first used by Catherine Krausen in her CC12M clip condition models uh, in December that OpenAI then used in their Glide models, um, where famously they removed the humans in January and then really implemented, they called it unclip in DALI2 with the VITH embeddings, where they kind of stuck those two together. So it learned from the image classifier model what concepts were. You know, these things have like hundreds of millions, if not billions of words in there. And it also understands like the word ishness so like a lot of people were getting around the open ai filters by putting a bamna and things like that right yeah. uh because it kind of gets it <laughs> even though it's not a bama you know plus multilingualness so now th these are crazy little couple of gigabyte models that somehow happen to know billions of words and images and all sorts of things um it's just that we barely scratched the surface how to optimize these this is also one reason why, you know, we were like, well, it'd be interesting to just have something that represents the whole internet. Because what you're going to find as you explore that little two billion, sorry, that little two gigabyte file, I don't know, but I can tell you, like, we've only literally explored maybe 0.1% of it, which is insane if you think about it. Yeah, I feel like the biggest thing right now is that we're really trying to figure out how exactly to get the most out of this tool that you guys created. Yeah, and like I said, you're using the raw prompt now and still smashing all these other tools that have massive pre and post processing, right? And that's insane. Like once you start using all these other things and putting it in a pipeline where it belongs, because right now you're literally throwing pixels at a screen and expecting them to randomly stick, you'll be able to create superb, immense stuff, you know, actually taking the time to build up things bit by bit, connecting it to search engines so you can import stuff, you know? The possibilities are endless. And again, using the same model as the basis for that is going to be super interesting, as well as then your own custom models and other things. So yeah, like I said, I think it's uh, just really interesting, but it knows a lot more than you'd expect. There's probably some sort of magic word. So the magic word was art station. You know, it's like Superman, Mr. Mixer to Pistol. I can't pronounce it. Probably some weird combination of words that every single output is going to be stunning. And it's like probably just the mashup of letters and characters. 
Uh, hopefully it doesn't summon like elder demons from the abyss, but you never know. Like, uh, yeah, well, that was kind of my only question. So uh, thank you guys. Yes. Excellent. Thanks for the question. All right. Shall we return to the text chat and see? Because those those questions were coming in. So go for it. Yeah. All right. Excellent. So um, from the uh, the the stage chat, uh, we've got a great question here from Progen, which is, uh, can you tell us more about Open Clip Vit H slash fourteen? And does it include other languages? And in what percentages? Will it be open sourced? Can it be used as a visual language model like Chinchilla and Flamingo? How does it compare to them? So, you know, on all the vision models that you've used so far, uh, like Midjourney and things like that, Midjourney uses ClipL14, which is the kind of best one. It's large versus huge. Um, so huge is kind of three times the size, effectively. So it's a bit difficult to fit on something. But again, it's what Dali has embedded in it. Uh, this is not multilingual, I believe. Uh, sorry, I'm just trying to remember because I haven't really been overseeing the training of it. It's been the um, Lion team and Russ and kind of others. Um, it's English and it, you know, these aren't the models that you use in Chinchilla and kind of other things. Um, it's a very different type of model. Like I said, it's better for embedding and guiding uh, and image classification. So right now the extrapolation of the top zero scores, which is kind of how good it is classification, is world class because the previous open clip models have outperformed um open eyes, you know, which is fantastic. It's a feature of the data set and the great work done by Ross and kind of others in the team. Um, and again, we've sponsored quite a bit of that work um, out there. The Chinchilla, Flamingo and other type models that will be coming later on this year. So, you know, one of the things we're planning on doing is a Chinchilla scaling suite and then having these more multimodal models that can do a bunch of different modalities. So they can describe images like here's a bomber on a chair standing on a peach tree or things like that um, because it has these different cross modalities embedded. But I wouldn't expect that for a few months, uh, to be honest. But even then, like, this is all crazy. This is like, again, like the early days of Web3 where... It just moves so fast, right? It's like a few months. That's nothing. Yet it feels like forever. You know, like God knows where we'll be then. All right. Phenomenal. That? Okay, so uh, next question we have here is a question about a roadmap when uh, init images are usable. This is from me, AI. Init images will not be usable in the box. I don't want to see the crazy stuff you guys put up. In the images on the website, I don't know, Bill, are we putting them on the website? Um, uh, we're looking at uh, ways in which to integrate it into a certain tool set. Um, it won't, I don't think that's planned for the initial immediate thing. The immediate plan is, a, is to improved image generation, you know, experience out of Discord and uh, a bit more control over it. But the... Um, yeah, it shouldn't be too long. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it shouldn't be too long. I mean, like, again, the model is completely capable of it. You'll be able to do it in Disco and Majesty and kind of other things when the model's released. Um, the in the image is just like an advanced seed. And it's actually quite good for the uh, image generation time because you can have a lot fewer steps when you have a more structured image versus kind of some of this random Gaussian noise that you have with the seeds. Um, this is also, you know, true of pipelining where you've got centipede diffusion and again, majesty and other things like that. It really helps. Um, but we are doing a lot of work around the interpolations for animation, etc. So, you know, we'll carry all that over to even better in its seeding. Okay, what's next? Yeah. Yeah. That time will come. So, uh, and I, here's a softball question. What are the chances stable diffusion goes open source by the end of the year? Of course it will. Of course it will. That's an easy one. Great. Okay, excellent. Of course it will. Right. What do you guys take us for? Like, come on, you've seen the pace of innovation and output. Like I said, the only thing right now is just we got to test the not safe for work filter, got to make sure that the initial set of parameters are decent. There's a little bit around an ethics license that we're working on that is similar to the rail license um, from Hugging Face kind of bloom, you know, to bit of transparency. We may or may not use it. If we can use it and keep things open source and, you know, remove some of the stuff, like you must say that all your output is like machine generated. We don't really care about things like that. 
you know, other people might because of their thing, we don't really mind, then great. That's literally all that stands between this and release. Excellent. Okay. So, uh, Moon Got Game is, I think, someone who's got their hand up. So, Moon Got uh, Game, you're coming on up to speak. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. Hi. Oh, my God. It's, uh, wow, it's so nice to speak to you in person as far as in person goes. Um, my question was if the new clip models you're training, would they have a higher token limit? Currently, uh, a lot of people are running to the problem of running out of uh, tokens for their prompts. I don't know. <laughs> I'll put it quite straightforward. We can find that out. Um, again, the model is just... The, the, it isn't the model. The token limits are a factor of a number of things in the training process, so this will depend on how we train stable diffusion. Uh, the V2s and others are a little bit different as well. I mean, the reason that you post a lot of things in your token limit, and we added the tokenizer so you can see it, it's there, is because the model still isn't that good at understanding output, right? And again, it stands alone, raw input in, raw input out. As you have pipelining and a bunch of this other stuff and inpainting, it'll be a lot better and you won't need to have these ridiculously long kind of token inputs. I think you can see though, from what we did with like GPT Neo X and things like that, we are in favor of longer token limits um, versus, you know, some of the other uh, closed source competitors. So we would definitely try and increase it, but I'm not sure if this will directly lead to that. It'll just lead to higher quality compositional elements, um, similar to DALI 2 uh, and the step up there, but not as good as the T5XXL, that's a language model or UL2 language model embeddings that we're testing out on some of the other models that are coming down the pipeline. Lovely. And is this clip model going to be used in the training of V2 or V3? No, those are separate. Those are L14 um, VLs, just similar to this, but they have a bunch of other tricks and things like that that we will talk about and release. Um, you know, resolution outputs and uh, let's just say other things. Lovely. Um, another thing I wanted to ask about is upscaling. I think it's one of the most sought after features of um, uh, in the server. I recall you said uh, Stability has been training a few state-of-the-art upscalers. Are these going to be integrated in the model or will they be released separately? Upscalers are separate to the model. Um, in fact, upscaling is interesting because it's actually one of the largest uses of compute resource. So DALI 2 takes a 64 by 64 image as its initial output and then upscales twice to 256, then 1024. Um, some of the upscalers we have, one of them I believe actually already released in the Simulacra bot uh, GitHub, but we kind of just didn't package it up. Um, latent diffusion upscalers are coming. It's just right now we want to get the models out before we get those going. And they should be better because they're trained on the same image data set and things like that. So you'll get less and less corruption. You've seen some big advances in upscalers, or anyway. Um, I think, again, that will continue because it is a function of the same data set with some very specific changes. But we do want to introduce those in the website. It just might take a little bit because we want to make sure to get the core experience correct before we uh, kick on there, especially given the higher compute requirement of that. All right. No. All so right. We've... Well, thank you so much. It's uh, You're doing God's work, you and the team. We are so thrilled to be here. Thank you very much for being part of the community. All right, who's next? Yeah, thanks for being here. Really appreciate it. Of course. Um, okay, so I'm going to um, jump to the next question here. Uh, let's see, we've got some questions in the in the chat that I, I'm just dropping answers on wherever I can, where it's a yes or a no. So if I drop an X on something, folks, that means the answer is no. And if I... I need to indicate a yes. I'll make sure the yes is very clear. So, um, okay, we got two questions here. This is from Heathen. Uh, okay, question number one. I'm a huge fan of Novel AI, and I feel their release of their image gen feature is a bit blocked pending release of the stable diffusion model weights. In parentheses, I call it Prima Nocta rights to release SD's own projects go uh, first goes to SD, I suppose. Uh, for them, will the model weights 
uh, release be held up by a test schedule on the safety filter? Or is it probably going to be enough that the filter just appears to be functioning properly? So there are multiple parties that have access to the weights, including researchers and partners such as Novel AI and others. No one should be... Yeah, they're all kind of held up by just a release. So, you know, that's part of the thing that they signed with us, effectively. Um, the model weights that they are using are our model weights. So this isn't a fine-tuned version or other things. They will be working on those. So I think it's only right that kind of their release is dependent on us releasing it publicly. We're in a privileged position because obviously, you know, we're the ones that help drive this model. Um, but again, like, everyone's just eager because it's so cool, right? We're literally not talking about end of year or months or anything like that. Like we said, we will release weights and we released it to research as soon as possible. It's just that we need to do this extra bit here to make sure that the general release is safe and then also to sync it up because there is advantages to releasing these things early. But we want to get it out to as many people as possible. Um, like, I don't want to sit on this. Actually, someone said it was a bit like, uh, I think this was a Reddit comment. They were like, it's a bit like fire from the gods, right? You really don't want to hold on to it. You're going to put it out so it lights up everyone. And you also don't want it to burn down the house. So it's about kind of managing that process really carefully. Because this will light the spark of creativity in just the whole world. So we really want it to get out there and to be used for legal purposes everywhere. Like if it's illegal, then that's wrong. You know? uh, well, you know, complicated, but you know what I mean. Like legal, ethical, and moral purposes. Whatever those might be for your legal ethics and morals, shall we say. Excellent. Yeah, that 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 quote was fantastic. It is fire. It is it is literally and figuratively like fire. It's the most incredible tool. Um, I'll I'll say it over and over. It's the most incredible creative tool I've ever used. So, uh, and then uh, uh, he then had a second part to the question here: the official web UI, exciting feature leaks for us? Question mark history or library of generations? Uh, we are that's yeah we're working on it. Uh, in painting will come later. Prompt term token weights. Uh, uh, that's an interesting question. That'll that's an interesting thing we'll look at uh, in terms of when that's going to come into the web UI. You know, again, we're working through making sure we can figure out the best way to stage everything and present it back to you. Uh, things in the oven you don't even know about to ask. Yes, there's tons of it, and we can't talk about it yet. <laughs> and then uh, he then says thanks to all involved. Uh, and, and yes, thank you for being here. All right, so let's yeah, take another uh, voice question. Yeah. I think there's something to just emphasize. You know, the web UI is our web UI, right? If you don't like it, you can use someone else's. Like, this is, again, very atypical, right? Because it's like, oh, you've got to use ours, and it's the only way. Like, whatever. If you don't like our API, use someone else's. If you don't like our web AI UI, use someone else's. We're just going to try and deliver the best experience possible and become more and more communicative as we go along. The reason that we're being a little bit, like, you know, camera shy and shutter shy is just because we've got such cool things out there that we really just want to wow everyone you know i think the product team's working super hard to do that and we will continue to support and upgrade the open source uh variant such as disco and majesty and some of these other ones as well just like most of the notebooks out there have catherine's name and other people in the team's name right on there we are all massive supporters of open source and we just want these tools to be out to make everyone's lives better and if our tools are better than others for some of the product stuff great if not at least you got a choice because that's how we're operating. It's 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 man, it's amazing. It's yeah, it's genuinely fantastic. So yeah, exactly. So we're yeah, I I love yeah. <laughs> You just said it so uh, so well. Uh, so let me invite someone else up here to the stage to ask a question. Here we've got um, Altrin here. Let me bring you up to speak. Alt Ryan, welcome. How are you? Wow, I was muted. Hi guys. Um, again, Matt, nice to talk to you again. Quick question about you know, the future of training those models and, and the image sets. So if you have the Leon, Leon, I'm not sure how to pronounce this. Um, in the future, now that like you know, Mid Journey is doing millions of people in their Discord, state stability is gonna blow the world up. The whole internet is like filled with AI generated images. Would the next iterations, I don't know, stability AI. Um, Six or something would be trained on human and machine kind of generated images, and what would that future look like? Is there a path to create machine generated images versus human generated Im images? How how do you think about kind of the next the next for models and uh, sorry uh, for um, 
indexes? I think that's a great question, right? Like, <laughs> is it going to be self-referential? The answer is yes. This model was trained on itself, right? So we had the alpha simulacra bot where people had to rate image outputs, right? And then we used that as kind of feedstock to train this model to be even better, as well as to make a subset of Lion, which was aesthetic. Aesthetic meaning cool. Um, so, you know, as you go forward, you said there'll be this explosion of massive amounts of images just everywhere. Um, and future things will be based on that. But like I said, as stability, what we're doing is we're going to do national level models to represent every culture and this and that. So we're going after more and more data sets that otherwise would not be available to train even better models and custom models based on our learnings, how to choose two general ones. So Lion 5B will be superseded by a larger Lion that's in the works. I can't say how big. Um, you know, leave it to the Lion team to kind of announce. And again, that will be a benchmark um, because, you know, the reason for these large Lion data sets is so you can compress them and reduce them down to exactly what you want. And so we're doing better and better tools to allow that to happen. The reason for going after these public sector data sets, you know, from archive.org, Wikimedia and others that we're in talks with is to have better quality data sets to train these models on. Um, so I wouldn't worry too much about model quality. And in fact, because the outputs of these are so good, it's not like if you can type things, right? It's like you'd want to train a model on these outputs. Um, finally, there has been a question asked on Twitter quite a lot. Um, the intention is to release all these models, uh, prompts and the kind of outputs as an open source data set. However, as a result of, you know, the input and everything that everyone said, one of the things that we have is Discord integration with the website. So you can log in with your Discord as well as other ways. I think we'll probably make it opt out because maybe people weren't fully aware that their kind of prompts and things could be um, included in the Creative Commons data set that we want to offer for research. And so we'll do our best to make that happen. So you can just say, remove my images from this data set before we release it, and we'll communicate with the community for that. Thank you. Uh, a quick, quick follow-up. Have you considered um, adding to the EXIF data of the generated images something that, that will say that this was generated by, you know, stability? If I watermark and things, we decided not to. I mean, I suppose we could do that, Bill, um, but I don't really see a reason to. I don't. I'm not a fan of it. I, I we've we've had some internal discussions, and they will probably continue. But I'm not a fan of watermarking things, and I don't think you are either, right? From a visual perspective, or from generally just to know that it was generated, or from both. Oh, from an aesthetic perspective, there is a larger conversation to be had about you know the nature of the images being identifiable as generated, and there's a lot of conversations about that happening, and and I think yeah, there's definitely. Uh, there's definitely more to come on that in that front for sure. Yeah, I've got no real strong viewpoints on that. I mean, like if you say that a photo is from a Canon camera and it's in the EXIF data, then you could have something that it's from stable diffusion or something like that. I don't really see a problem with it. I don't really see a need for it. Um, so I'll let someone else smarter than me make that decision. Or I'll let the devs make the decision on that one. Thank you. Excellent questions. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, we've got some uh, comments from the from the chat here. So uh, up here, we've already got one from Progen. I'm going to skip that one, Progen, because I answered your earlier one. Uh, let's see. Okay, uh, we've got one that says, uh, it sounds like other models are planned for the future for audio, 3D, animation. Are we invited to those betas by virtue of being beta members in this Discord already? Or will that be a different thing? I I, I, I pass it to you, Imad. Yeah, sure, why not? I mean, like models need to be stress tested, and I think the community has been largely well behaved. Um, so, you know, why not? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, you know, maybe we've been less well behaved. Apparently, the bot is being updated now. So sorry if some things are breaking, but all of you on this chat, are extra kind of welcome. We will make track of kind of all the user accounts that are beta members. So, you know, like you'll get to access the website first. Like I said, you can connect it with your Discord. I think part of the plan is to try and make it so that you can take your images off the Discord and things like that. Um, and, you know, things will be private on the website. Uh, like we will add social features, but it won't be quite the same as this. 
Um, other front ends and other things we're working on are extremely social. Um, but this website, not so much. Excellent. So um, let's see. There are more, so many questions here. I want to try to get as many as possible here. I'm going to jump around a bit. Um, some answers are already out there, right? Will the website make adding details more user-friendly? I think we covered that. Um, let's see. We've got some hands up. Pancakes, I see your hand. Uh, I'd like to invite you up to uh, to speak. Hello there. Um, first of all, thanks a lot for your work. It's amazing. It's honestly insane. Um, my question is an uh, other one than image generation. It's about um, audio generation. And will it be possible at some point to make um, audio samples and generate them or maybe interpolate them. That would be amazing. Yeah, next month. Whoa. <laughs> amazing. Um, and the other question was... Um, yeah, cool. I'm not going to uh, say it's the fusion quality though, otherwise yeah. it will kill me. It won't be. Just imagine it will move fast. I think the okay. amount of talent in audio who is intermediated digitally and will come to the Harmony community will be off the charts. Already amazing people in there. Um, it will just be insane. I, that's the community that I'm actually most hyped for, I think. Uh, yeah, me. You know, right. um, um, and also, um, will it be um, maybe possible to have a seed or prompt interpolation um, functionality? Like, for example, you could uh, think about uh, one concept, one prompt, and then another one that is kind of related, but um, would be like more to the and tailor to the output you would like, and would it be possible to make a weight in between those to like interpolate, to, to fine tune um, outputs? That would be an amazing feature as well, I think. Yeah, I mean, that's not hideously complicated. It's more than possible. I mean, you can look at Xander's recent art piece and kind of other things, and the work that Gene's kind of done there when they're playing around with this prompt seed interpolation with stable diffusion itself. It looks pretty damn cool. Um, again, like the stuff that is cool and interesting and the stuff that's complicated, I'd say that's in cool and interesting. It's not complicated. It's just a matter of the optimal UI UX for that, right? And so, you know, we're bringing on more and more really talented UI UX people. Always on the hunt for superb people. Please send to careers at stability.ai. Um, and we're going to try and make all this stuff as easy as possible so that you can really like almost mold it like clay, you know, to get the outputs that you want. Because life isn't about four second, four pictures, oh, it's perfect. It's going to be about process, you know? And I want everyone to graduate from this kind of almost loot box mechanic to process and having that fine-tuned control that, you know, it's like driving a really nice car, right? <laughs> you want to have that responsiveness. I think that's what Bill and the team are really working on, responsiveness. It's amazing news. Uh, thanks, uh, so, thanks so much. And I guess about the Harmony, um, AI, we will get uh, get updated on the server. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, go, go to harmony.org, sign up for the mailing list, and you'll be first into that server, right? Or we'll send them a message. If you are really passionate, you can get into the server right now. Well, like I said, um, I'm not going to hype it up to massive levels. Like, we're not going to release a stable diffusion level model on day one, or even a jukebox level model. But there is some amazing stuff from amazing people going there. And I think that once it opens up, because they're just putting down the things, it will move really fast. It will make image gen look like a freaking turtle, because uh, every musician in the world will want to join. Amazing. Uh, thanks so much. Um, you do God's work, as it was said. Thank you. Just doing our best. Cheers. Thanks for your question. Thanks so much. Um, yeah, I dropped the link for Harmony in uh, the stage chat. And yeah, definitely, definitely look into it and reach out. Okay, so uh, Jeremy Kirschbaum, you have your hand up, and I saw your question in the chat. So why don't I bring you up and you can ask it here? Welcome. Yes. Great. Um, I was uh, curious to learn a little bit more. Uh, well, first of all, thanks. Uh, this is amazing. Um, curious to learn a little bit more about um, fine tuning and training. Um, one just practical question about fine tuning, which is how how much firepower do you think it'll take to effectively fine tune um, in terms of, uh, I guess, you were using V100 hours earlier. Uh, 
and then also just curious your more conceptual thoughts on is that the right place to focus right now should everyone just be like using the tree pre-trained model and trying to figure out what it does and focusing their attention there or is there like important work to be done on the uh, obviously there's work everywhere but where would you hope that people would focus their energy um in terms of like exploring fine-tuning or retraining if they have the resources to do it um or just focusing on using the model and figuring out those workflows and things uh, I think that's an excellent question. I mean, again, your energy is kind of where you want to have your energy. Um, but there's some amazing stuff you can do with fine tuning. So, you know, we've been lucky enough to bring Kali Yuga onto the team. And some of you will have seen her amazing work with watercolor diffusion, textile diffusion, and um, pixel art diffusion. I love pixel art. Uh, in fact, Kali Yuga, are you, is she on the call or is she here? Yeah, Kali Yuga's in the crowd here. Kali, would you like to join us on stage? invite you and you can turn it down if you wouldn't like to join so um but i have invited you up Kelly, hey. welcome to the can you hear me loud and clear awesome um so yeah i'm i've um i'm not sure how many of you guys are familiar with what i've done with uh with fine-tuning disco diffusion forks but um that's that's sort of my bread and butter i'm gonna be getting more familiar with fine-tuning uh stable models specifically because it's going to be um, a slightly different process because it won't be me fine tuning within a collab notebook. Um, so it's it's gonna. I don't have a super well formulated answer to I guess the excellent question you were asking, but um, I'm I'm hoping once I figure out you know optimal workflow for fine tuning to start maybe doing some like tutorials and webinars for the community to sort of get people jump started on fine tuning their own models and thinking about data set building. And, and sort of how the AI is learning based on what your inputs are and what your desired outputs, you know, are likely to be. Um, yeah. Yeah. And can you go kind of, what's the current requirements for compute for fine tuning? Um, on, on Disco, I have been able to fine tune uh, 256 by 256 models um, within a couple of days max, just within uh, Collab Pro, which is 16 uh, gigabytes. Of VRAM, so it's pretty attainable from a cloud-based subscription model. Um, I know some people have had luck fine-tuning it locally as well. I um, have not tried that. I'm I honestly uh, just because I'm so happy with the processing power that Collab gives me. I haven't seen a reason to, but it's doable. I know you can do five twelve by five twelve on a Pro Plus subscription, so that's I think twenty four gigs of VRAM. Um, but yeah. all that to say, it's completely within reach for the average consumer. Yeah, and I think it'll be the same for Stable Diffusion, because Stable Diffusion is actually a smaller model um, than the 256 model, believe it or not. Um, and there's some, you know, you don't necessarily have to get a 3090. Like, you can get a K80 for like 200 bucks, and that's 2 times 12 gigabytes. Mm -hmm. um, that should be able to fine-tune fine. So, yeah, I'd say fine-tuning is going to be really interesting, um, because that allows you to have the fine-grain control. I think that, you know, the prompt stuff is interesting, but it's just such a massive world of really interesting stuff that you can do to push the boundaries of this that I think it's just going to go insane. And I would also add that I don't think it needs to be an either-or sort of thing. Um, one of the things I like most about fine-tuning models is then turning around and using, you know, prompts that I've used for entirely different models or entirely different, you know, tools and seeing what I get out of each of the fine-tunes. Because it's almost, I was saying this to somebody the other day, each model is is almost like a its own person almost has like its own soul. It has to be communicated to slightly differently and sort of learning how to yeah. have a conversation with each model is an art form in and of itself. And I think there's a lot of value there and a lot of like learning to talk, you know, to, to any stranger, you know, becoming familiar with the tools. Great. Is your, uh, is your handle Kali Yuga for your yes. fine tuning? Uh, Kali Yuga. Uh, yeah. Kali uh, Cal Yuga underscore AI. Um, on most platforms just because somebody had already snagged the uh, Calyuga handle when I came along. Got you. Well, great. Looking forward to checking out those tutorials. Thanks. Yeah, for sure. Excellent. Great. Thanks for your questions. Those were really great questions and really, you know, they're going to come up a lot and fine tuning is going to be a big part of where we're headed with the community. And as, yeah, as Calyuga said, more events and more educational uh, uh, training is, is a big part of what we've been talking about. So. 
Okay, so I'm going to invite uh, Ting Tingen into the stage here. Let's see. Uh, come on up and join us. Hello. Welcome. Yeah, hey. okay, great. Um, I just have a few questions. I don't really have too many. But the first one I want to ask is about when the website launches in painting, is that going to be there immediately or are we going to have to wait for that? You have to wait for it. Um, right now, the team is training a brand new in painting model. And so I think probably as it comes, that will be first off. There's also a principle. Oh. You want to keep things as simple as possible. <laughs> oh. And so we're going to launch the website. You're going to break some stuff. We're going to fix it. And then we'll just keep on adding features. Again, you guys have seen how quickly we add features, right? Yep. Uh, you're not going to have to wait that long. And the in-painting model itself makes it a lot better to in-paint, shall we say, than uh, maybe other alternatives. Uh, okay, actually going off of that one, um, the, the, you said that the when you, when you change the resolution of the outputs from SD, you end up with artifacts sometimes with repeated characters and so on. I wanted to know, like, in the when we gain access to the website, would that have been solved or will we st still have that issue? I reckon day one, probably not, because it will still use the existing generator. But then as we integrate the more advanced generators that we're working on, it will instantly be solved um, and better. Um, and then as you have in-painting and other stuff and some of the more advanced features, it will definitely be gone. So again, oh. this is an iterative thing where we're trying to keep it simple, MVP, mirror a lot of the experience that you have here, but just with a smoother thing of not seeing a zillion 500 images passing by your face every two <laughs> seconds, just like we're now at the N to four, um, just so we can optimize around that. Um, having the ability to do loads and loads of images and some other stuff, and then just expand the feature set out aggressively. So we already built ridiculously advanced feature sets, right? But yeah, anyone yeah. who's run a product and has launched a product knows that if you do that on day one, stuff is going to break. And that's the last thing we want. We want you all you guys to have a really nice experience and then it, for it to rapidly improve. I, yeah, actually going off of that one, the other question I had was, I was looking up the license that you showed, the Bloom license, and I know you said that wasn't the exact license that you'd ultimately use. You're going to use some modified version of that. But still, the question I had was, I saw with the Bloom license that any product that used code that was under that license would also have to be subject to the same license. So I want to know specifically if someone releases a, or well, company of Cooper people or whatever, releases software under that is derivative of SD, would they have to make their code open source as well? That's what I want to ask. Uh, so again, the specific Bloom thing that we're considering, and again, by we, I mean the devs. Yeah. Uh, like literally stability is a I dev focused company. They get to make the decisions is the rail license not the general bloom license the general bloom license has a lot of stuff in there it's open science as it were not open source and i got issues with it I, yeah rail, okay. rail is so interesting. The, yeah cows um, okay but like, i'll let you go yeah oh. right now the code and the data are creative like commons and mit licensed the weights is the final thing that we're figuring out the license for due to a bunch of different factors my ideal is that we just release the weights mit or Creative Commons with attribution, if you're going to get people to say thank you. There are okay. other things in there and other complexities, but we're going to make it as permissive as possible. And then future releases, of which you know we will have many, again, will be as permissive as possible. It's just this is the first release. There are a lot of people out for our heads. We just got to yeah. be careful, right? <laughs> okay, so just for clarification, the actual source code and stuff for the, the, the thing that would hook into the model that's going to be either uh, MIT or I think the Apache license is what you said, like attribution or something you said. You can download it right now. It's on the Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. but I, I just, here. yeah, okay. But the, the thing that's in question is whether or not the model itself that got trained, that one is what the license is not decided on as yet. Exactly. And so the okay. devs are doing various permutations of that. Again, the devs are incredibly pro open source. But we are also aware that we live in a society, as it were. Uh, <laughs> and so we just got to be careful with this first launch. You guys have seen the press already about us, right? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> you know, a few months ago, it was like, you got nice ring and like these guys training open fold. I mean, we're training better fold, right? Like we're, we're, we funded all these things, you know, we employed all these people and it was glowing press. 
the moment that we come out as a competitor, it shifts, right? Yep. And people start picking all these things up. We're still doing the same thing, but at an even bigger scale. And you can see the change in language. So we're just being careful. We're not giving anyone any excuse. We're going to do okay. things properly. We'll but, do things right, but, not, yeah. but theoretically, it would be possible for someone to just train that. Well, I mean, I say someone, but more than likely someone with a lot of resources to be able to train their own versions under their own license, their own model specifically um, under a of different. Course. And OK, OK, uh, just. Yeah. Uh, two more questions here with the website when it launches is there going to be is it going to be released like for the public immediately or is it going to have some sort of priority system where with uh, access to the website how exactly is that going to go uh, i'd probably be priority we don't want to kill everyone right um okay. so again you know you've seen how we've done things staged but our timelines are very different yeah. to most <laughs> And a last question, I checked on the GitHub and one of the features that it had was you could give it a image that was more rudimentary and with some sort of similar in painting as feature, it would fill in the, sp the spaces and, and um, stuff with what makes sense, right? What I wanted to ask about that, because what it showed was a more rudimentary like image that was more kind of meant to be illustrative and stuff. Is that the sort of thing you could use on an, a more well put together image as some sort of over painting kind of thing is, would it be possible to do something like that? Like, you, you know what I mean? Yes, could be possible. And again, anything that's possible, if we don't do it, someone else will. Well, yeah, I, I'm, I'm more kind of asking, is that something that you could already do with the tool now without any modification? That's more what I'm asking. Yes. Okay, well, thanks. That's all the questions I have. <laughs> yeah, you just have to use, I mean, literally, we mentioned the software package and the kind of thing there. For an integrated experience, it'll be a lot better. This is kind of a Gaugan type thing, right? Where you draw a sketch and then it becomes reality. Yeah. Again, go to the Studio Morphogen uh, Twitter and you'll be able to see something very similar and we're working with them. Uh, there's just a, people will figure out all sorts of crazy crap. With actually, this. I know I said that was my last question, but I actually did have another one. Uh, it's actually similar to the question the last guy asked, right? But I, he, when he was asking about training and the necessary computing resources for that, I think the answer we got was the Kali Yuga. She used like Colab Pro, uh, the 16 gig version and so on, the 16 gig VRAM version, but she never actually used herself. Like, do you have any insight as to what's the lowest necessary requirements that someone could have to have effective fine tuning of a model so like within a reasonable time so let's just say like within a week or so um, i have what no, you have no, no idea, idea. <laughs> okay no idea, like, it's know, too specific of a question <laughs> yeah we're just trying to optimize it i mean look this, this is the thing right because we're gonna open source it all these questions yeah. answered really quickly right yeah like, even now like because with so many researchers some of these questions will be answered more and more and we'll just widen 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 but like if i could release right now and push a button i would you know, if the devs were fine with it, I would. Um, and also, you know, myself, I want to make sure it's released right. Um, so I wouldn't worry too much about this. This will not be the smallest model we release as well. Okay, uh, thanks. That's all I have. All right, just... All right, Phil, should we yeah. answer some chat questions? Yeah, I think we'll switch to some chat questions. Uh, let's see. Uh, so I'm going to scroll through here. And someone says, uh, Kim Baum says, question. Are 15,000 Discord members, uh, sorry, it says, are 15,000 Discord member is bot or real human? I think the answer to that is real humans. I think it's all real humans in here, except for uh, the, 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 the dream mothership, right? The, 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 is there, uh, are there any other bots in here? No, I, mean, I think that probably, but I mean, like, we, we kind of, I forgot to close the beta list. <laughs> we could have a lot more people in here. Than uh, fifteen thousand, if we really wanted to, but we don't need to because, like, I don't want to kill the moderators. It would be sad if they died. Um, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Um. So, uh, let's see. Um. Will the slow mode be removed from the dream channels at some point? Do not. I don't think this bot is long for the world. That's going to go away. Yeah, we're going to get uh, things to be a better experience so than that's right. Yeah, the website's just superior, right? It's like full yeah. stop. Like the social element of the bot's fantastic, but like, you know what everyone wants. Everyone wants a little bit of social where they can get insp inspiration. Otherwise, they just want to crack on. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Great. So uh, here's a question here from Urkarp, which is: Will there be expansions made to the data set Stable Diffusion uses? As an example, I've noticed a general lack of data on Eastern Asian media, manga authors and such, in quotes here, uh, or is this something that will be left to users to create themselves once the model's open source? I would say you absolutely do not need to worry about anime, manga, or manhwa. Yeah, <laughs> that's the one thing. Yeah. Yeah, look, it's, it's a case of there is going to be a lot of different models. The base model probably won't change that much. The other models will change. And again, you can fine tune it. Okay. Excellent. Yep. Yeah. I'm looking for uh, uh, another question here. Let's see what else we have. Um, so, uh, Let's see, actually, I've got someone, uh, i got a hand up, ready to go. So let me bring, uh, bring them up. OK. Oh, hello. Oh, yeah, welcome to the stage. Hello. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for inviting me. Um, I, I, don't, I, I had quite a simple question, actually. Um, and that is, uh, if, if I understand, like the images are um, in a latent space, uh, will will we have the ability to perhaps like subtract or add or even multiply or divide images as it is possible with uh, with like uh, material that is like encoded into this space? If, if I'm phrasing it correctly. Um, so I didn't quite get that. Um, okay, so I uh, I watched uh, a video on YouTube uh, back in the day uh, by Kerry KH. I, I would suspect that a lot of people are familiar with him here. He does a lot of like AI content. I, I don't want to advertise them, but basically, um, if you have like I think he was using Gaugan uh, to basically photos of uh, of celebrities, and then uh, when when uh, like one portrait of a celebrity and another portrait of a celebrity was uh, like in the laden space, you could then put them together and it would create a combination between these two. So I I was wondering if that could be possible with like the images created by stable diffusion. Yeah, I mean you can interpolate the kind of images quite straightforwardly. I mean look there's lots of models for different things. That's not really a stable diffusion type of model. You know, that's more maybe a style clip or some of these other kind of GAN based models would be better for that. Um, but, you know, definitely you could. Um, All right. Yeah. Thank you. Nice. Uh, nice Excellent. start meeting you. Yeah, you, you guys rock. <laughs> yes, much appreciated. Thanks right, we'll so take much. We'll take a couple of questions, I think. So another, let's say three, and then we're done. Okay, great. All right, Stochastic Pixel, I'm going to bring you up here. Hello. Hope you can hear me okay. Yep. Yep. I was wondering, first of all, uh, what the method you used to compress a, was it 100 terabyte file or data set down to just 2 gigabytes is? Well, I mean, it's not really compression, right? This is creation of a neural network uh, based on kind of transformer diffusion architecture. So I think that there is, do we have literature on that, um, Kaneka Yuga? Like, I think, do we have like train your own little Diffusion model? I think we might do. Um, well, they got some kind of resources that have some more of the formalized way and mechanisms of that. But again, what you're looking at is attention. It's looking at the hidden layers of connectivity between the various um, images and text. And that's what you need the supercomputer for because it's a complicated, difficult problem, right? It's complicated and difficult to figure out those hidden layers of meaning. In fact, that's how humans work. 
So like, um, you know, I have a child with autism, for example. Some of you might have similar people in your family or network. With ASD, what happens is that there's so much noise that you don't formulate the connections and these hidden layers correctly in your brain. So one of the ways that you get around that is applied behavioral analysis, where you rebuild the connections between an apple meaning various things. This AI does something very similar, and that's how it gets the massive compression that you see, because it's very similar to the way the human brain works. So I think that there are some very good YouTube videos around this, um, and we will kind of dig them up and put them maybe in the news. And then you can really dig into that or go another level beyond to the actual mathematics of kind of how the gradients work and how the machine really compresses this. There's not really compression. It's more like principle learning and understanding. You know, this isn't a database that's wind zipped. This is more like a principle based approach to if an apple is in the sentence, it could mean an apple in all these different senses. And let's see what we do as we randomly denoise the outputs. Enhance, enhance, enhance. That's why on mid journey and things like that, you literally see it go from chaos to order. This is obviously too fast for that. So uh, yeah, it's quite a complicated bit of mathematics. Um, quite a relatively elegant process. Um, and again, there are some good explainer videos about this and things like that that we'll dig up and we'll add to maybe the news or resources so people can dig into it and then maybe train their own little mini models as well. Thank you. That definitely clears it up quite a bit. That makes a lot more sense than just compressing an actual file. That level of compression, I just didn't understand how that was possible, but I suppose it's not possible. One uh, other well, question I had, um, and I apologize if this has been asked before, uh, I'm wondering what the absolute minimum requirements for running either the current models or future models will be, because I've, unfortunately, I've just got a moldy old uh, 960, GTX 960 at the moment. Well, I mean, like, just run it in the cloud, right? Whatever. Um, but like I said, for me, if you want to run these models well, you probably need a K80, which is a couple of hundred bucks. That would be kind of my recommendation there. But over time, we'll make the models smaller and smaller. So I think, and the devs will kill me, we can get a 10 times improvement in efficiency over the next year. That would be my guess via instruct and reinforcement learning with human feedback time models. Because um, again, this is actually quite a general brain. So remember, this model can create anything. Like anyone on this call, do you have any doubt this model can create just about anything? You can see it. But do you need a model that can create anything? Maybe you just want to have pictures of cats. How big would a cat model be? A lot smaller. You don't need all those little neural network neurons, right? So, you know, you'll be able to run things on your 960 or even your phone. But they might not be a model that can do absolutely everything, but can still do a heck of a lot. Well, that makes sense. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to speak. Cool. Thank you for being my community. All right. Two more questions. Excellent. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for those questions. Those were great. Um, OK, so uh, Rich, uh, Rich Servo, come on up and join us on stage, please. Welcome. Uh, is your microphone on? It uh, does not look like it. Do you want to type Hi, a Rich. question? Yeah, we can't hear you, Rich. Uh, yeah, you can type. Through. We'll answer this question in type. We'll bring someone else up to the stage. Yeah, sure. Just shoot it to me in the message that you have. Um, while he's doing that, I'm going to bring uh, Missy up on stage. So, Missy, uh, I think I've just sent you the invite to speak. If you had a question, did you have your hand up, or was I jumping the gun there? Okay, all right. So then we're going to try with Priestley here. Priestley, I think you have your hand up. I'm going to invite you to speak. Oh, thank you very much. And uh, starting off, You're I welcome. just wanted to say uh, you guys are great. I was here on the initial beta talk, and it gave us so much good information. And I've been kind of doing AI art and fun with that since uh, Night Cafe. So this is so much better. It's been amazing. Um, I just had a small question with the recent bot update. They 
uh, limited the amount of pictures to four, which is completely reasonable. I think nine was amazing. But um, the individual images were a little bit easier to pick out. I know they can still go by seed afterward with another generation, but would it be possible to maybe get that back in the future? Uh, you mean in terms of have them one after the other after the other, or instead of a grid? Yeah, basically. I know it's kind of a mess when it's in chat because everyone's doing it, but since it's just four images now, it won't be as bad. I mean, probably, but like, again, we're going to move to a website shortly, right? It's like this, we're not trying to do mid journey part two, right? Um, so this bot will decide what to do with it. We have some options, like the website experience is just far superior. So like you're nearly there for the website. Um, yeah, and like, uh, you know, Night Cafe is also fantastic. I want to say one thing, actually, shout out to Night Cafe. Um, kind of Angus reached out a few months ago. And he said, thank you for all that you're doing. Um, we'd like to make a donation to whatever you're doing. We don't care what it is. Uh, out of the blue. And he's the only person who did that. You know? And so we really like Night Cafe. And we love the community over there as well. And, you know, great guy. So, again, thank you to them. Yeah, honestly, Night Cafe is amazing. And uh, I would be happy to make a donation, too. I think a lot of the people listening and have been using this for the last week or two just want to throw money at you and just say thank you. This is really fun. It's kind of like watching the future unfold. It's really good stuff. It's going to be crazy, eh? <laughs> thank you all for your support. All right, cool. So who's next? Excellent. OK, all right. So we have uh, Liz E. Live. Uh, come on up to the stage here. Uh, hey, um, so I was curious about the uh, some. I had some questions about the latent space of your model, um, and if you've done, like, in particular, its relationship to the metric you're using. Uh, I heard you were. I heard you were doing something with um, humans comparing images. Um, have you evaluated how um, how good of a representation your latent space is for those uh, for that metric that you evaluated? So, look, it was a very not standard kind of thing with the alpha. It was just right at 1 to 10, right? And then we kind of had some scores as we checked some different models, like the V2 and other things. Um, so the V2 we checked was like 768 model, so output to 768, but it was a little bit undertrained. So it wasn't as good as the V1. The new V2s are not 768 anymore, <laughs> but they're better. But it was very, like... It wasn't rigorous. It was more a case of we just wanted to build a data set, the Simulacrobot data set, the aesthetic captions that have been released now. Uh, can someone put the link on that to the stage chat? Um, to clip filter the Lion 5B data set. The only real rigorous checks that we've done are the FID scores. So the FID scores you can find on the GitHub. And again, kind of this is pushing up towards imaging level on that. With the new um, <laughs> bit H encoder, it should again go much further towards that. The reality is, though, that the evaluation metrics for image models are just crap. So what we did with language models at Eleuther is that we built the LM evaluation harness, the language model evaluation harness, that's now standardized pretty much across the sector. I imagine we'll do something similar for image models. If you have any input or suggestions about that, we'd love to hear it. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, I, I Is this a good form for that, or...? Well, I mean, like, just... They considered and you know either drop us a mail or a message and sure. you'll definitely get the devs. Awesome. Uh yeah. Uh thank you. Uh I was also uh um you so you you said you, you have a uh, 336 dimension latent space uh currently, right? I believe it's bit L336. Yeah. Can't remember. It's been a long day. All right, thank you so much. Uh... thank you. Okay, so that, that would wrap it up then. We're just about at 5.24, almost 5.30, so we've been going almost for 90 minutes. So um, we, can, uh, we can wrap it up. Do you want to uh, give us any closing words, closing thoughts? Yeah, you're all going to get mad with us now because we're going to roll out the classifier. Uh, <laughs> and so all the titties will kind of go uh, for a while. Again, please bear with us. We're going to scale back the levels, and we just need to fine-tune this down. It's best to start at the extremes and go down. Um, again, you know, thank you all for participating in this beta. Uh, it's really helped us understand the model better and created some really interesting things. Um, you will see the migration to the website, hopefully, over the next week. Touch wood, fingers crossed, you know. Uh, good luck to the product team. 
Um, and again, we are working as hard as we can to get this model out to everyone. We do not want to sit on it because, you know, our fingers are getting burned. Um, I'd also say that, you know, hate is going to hate. People are misinformed. Please don't respond negatively to people who are scared, right? Or people who are just making specious arguments. Don't get drawn into that. Instead, make pretty pictures and beautiful art. Because um, the temptation is always there. Uh, like, I haven't been drawn, hopefully, into too many arguments. And neither should you. Because I think, know that everyone who's on this call right now really feels a lot for this because it is amazing. And it is going to be a profound change. Like I said, it's a Renaissance 2.0 moment. So again, I'd like to thank everyone on this call, everyone in the community. And I look forward to continuing to build the community. And... We are on the front line and pioneers of just something really amazing. And it's super duper cool. So thank you all. Thank you for answering all those questions. Uh, fantastic. So um, thanks, everyone. We're going to close the stage. And thanks for being here. And thanks for being wonderful parts of the community and being uh, generous and being uh, kind to everyone. So thanks. And we'll see you soon.